Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be going over a new feature in Carbide Create called Engrave. It used to be that if you wanted to do any infill on your acrylics, you used to have to use a pocket. And that would lead to some interesting results. But that is not the case anymore. So stick around for the rest of this video to kind of go over the ins and outs of Carbide Create's new Engrave feature. But before we jump into that, remember if you haven't uh, subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button to keep up with all the latest videos that come out. Let's cut to it and get into this video. So we're in Carbide Create Pro right now. This is build 530. And as you can see, this is the test I ran. Now I tried uh, finding more info on all the different settings and what they do in uh, the engrave function, but there's not a lot of detail out there. So that's what I want to dive into today is kind of just going over what all the settings do and kind of the results and timing and how that all went. Now, one of the other things I want to point out is that it does say engraving um, is available for just the regular carbide create but there's additional engraving options and on the pro level but it doesn't tell you which or which so i'm not sure exactly what's available for pro and what's available for the free version however we're going to be going over all the options that are available in pro so let's jump back into carbide let's take a look here let's open up uh, this first one here so this linear one that's gonna be A, what you see there. Now, just like with everything else, first thing you're gonna do is select your tool. So we got the drag bit um, selected here. Um, one of the nice things here is it tells you how many things you have selected um, and you can replace with current selection, but we're gonna leave all that alone. Depth, that's all still straightforward right here. We're just going down 0.1 uh, millimeter. All right, and here's where we start getting into the fun parts. Um, fill parameters. All right, so enable fill. That's just exactly like it sounds. You see in my letters here, there's no fill. So if you select that, it's going to just do the outline. But with it selected, filling out the rest of our parameters. So our fill step over, while I am using a 0.1 uh, V diamond drag bit, uh, I am. I did uh, change my fill step over to 0.035. I was kind of used to running that at 0.045. I may even drop that down a little bit further. I know that will increase times, but it is what it is when you start getting down into that scale. Next, we have the angle. And so you can see here how it's angled at a 45 degree here. We can go and change this. Um, I don't think I have that selected, so let's go ahead and select that. Make sure that's all selected here. We'll turn off all these real quick. All right, and so we could say change that to zero. Okay, and now there is no angle to it. Pretty cool. So you can control and really kind of add a different depth to your cuts, and uh, let's say you wanted to actually leave lines in between and kind of give it that characteristic, you could change that up to say 0.5 and leave some spacing in between all those lines. But we'll go ahead and get this back to 45. Okay, now you have fill style. So we're gonna have three different types of fill style. Linear, cross hatch, or vertical mirror. And linear is just like it sounds. It's just straight lines at whatever angle you have them. Crosshatch is going to be intersecting lines just like you learned in art class, like this. And then vertical mirror is very similar to crosshatch, except I I'm guessing they're basing it off the angle you have it at. I haven't played around with that a lot, but I did get some good results. All right, jumping in here real quick. Uh, I've played around a little bit more with uh, looking at the difference between crosshatch and vertical mirror. 
So here you can see we have vertical mirror and we put it on a 15 degree angle. And so we get this diamond pattern coming out. Now we come back in here and let's change that over to crosshatch. 15 degrees, you're going to get a square. So it's just flipping, uh, it's just like the name says, vertical mirror. It's just taking the vertical line and mirroring it. So you're going to get a different pattern. Now, what's interesting here next is the cut both ways. If you don't check that box real quick, let's show the simulation here and let's show the rapids. As you can see on our A here, there's lots of rapids there. Okay, this is cutting one way and basically it's going to cut like this, just lines down like this. It's going to start here and it's going to treat this whole vector selection right here as one piece. So let's change that angle back to 45 just to kind of give you a better idea. It'll find where it's going to have the shortest distance there and then keep going, keep going until we get here. So it's going to start here, go to here, raise up, go to here, make a mark here, raise up and go here and make a mark. And it's going to go and treat it all as one. Whereas if you have cut both ways, enabled like on B here, it's going to start like this, but it's going to treat just this, uh, these two circles and fill this in. It'll then, once it finishes that, it will then go and infill each individual one of these uh, vectors. So that's a pretty cool thing. Now, what does that really do? So on these first two here, the linear, <laughs> yeah, totally ignore these times right here. Uh, real world experience, those are not accurate. This A test right here took one hour and 26 minutes to cut, and B took uh, one hour and four minutes to cut. So the difference, the only difference between these two was the cut both ways option selected. Now, before we get into a little bit more of the timing stuff, let's open this up and let's select our tool because this was a little bit confusing. So here I had the plunge rate set to 300 and the feed rate set to 900. I'm thinking, cool, this won't, go, won't take that long. It'll take about 47 minutes. But here's the uh, tricky part. So remember, plunge rate is 300 and feed rate is 900. Let's look at the G code for this real quick. All right, here's the G code for A linear. So this is this one right here, and we want to find this feed rate. Feed rate is 300. Well, that's funny. That's my plunge rate, not my feed rate. So I don't know if that's the way they set this up or if that's the way they intended it. So here, instead of putting your normal plunge rate, uh, I would go ahead and put your feed rate there. All right, like I had told you earlier, disregard those times uh, that you're seeing here in carbide. Um, they are almost double if just not completely wrong. Um, let's look at cut both ways linear and let's look at cross hash, cross hatch cut both ways. All right, B here took one hour and four minutes to cut. And D, this is the crosshatch with double the amount of lines, took one hour and 20 minutes. That is when I looked at the G code and saw that the plunge rate was really what was driving the feed rate. So here on uh, crosshatch both ways D, I changed, uh, changed that up from 300 to 600. And again, we have double the amount of lines and it took uh, just 16 more minutes than B here for double the rate and double the lines. So big improvement there. Going from 
300 to 600, you're really doubling your speed. You add another 300 on top of that, you're, you're not getting much gain out of it. And just looking at these test pieces and cuts here, uh, 600 seemed to be a really good uh, feed rate. And of course, again, I know uh, some people get picky about that. It's at minutes or seconds. It's always with minutes because that's how carbide create works. So yeah, that was a little bit uh, confusing get going into this and having the feed rate actually pulling from your plunge rate. And this isn't meant to show, oh, what's the best way, you know, what's the greatest way to use this. This is more, this is what all the different settings do. I know that plunge rate and feed rate thing are going to trip some people up. Uh, you're just going to have to jump into your G-code. And if that's still the case, if they haven't fixed it, if it is a bug or if that's the way they intended it, I don't know. They didn't put much documentation into what the all the settings for the engraver function are. Not complaining because let's just, let's take this right here and let's just say pocket. Let's go find our engraver. There we go. And let's just look and see. It's not even reading. So let's, what am I doing wrong here? Let's keep looking. Step over, point uh, 35. Yeah, no, that's not what we want. We want point zero three five. See? So if we did a pocket on this, this is what it's going to end up. This is going to be the tool path it takes. And it's just... Uh, it's kind of ugly. I mean, just even compared to the step over here, compared to the linear way here. Pocket just gave some, I mean, that T is not too bad until you get here. That's just some really janky looking thing right there. And uh, I mean, there's just big gaps there. So we'll go ahead and delete that. But there you go. That's the engraved function for Carbide Create Pro. If you're using Carbide Create, just the regular free version, let me know what they do and don't uh, allow you to do differently. But let's go ahead and look at the test piece here. And overall, I'm saying A, you know, while slow, it, it gave a really good result. I really like the way that finished out. There's a few uh, little things here there. Um, B, had some issues uh, looks like it was pressed down harder at times and not at others um, I don't know maybe maybe that was my fault who knows but again this isn't about necessarily the overall end result as much as the software and what you can do to get the results you're looking for you're gonna have to play around with your step over and speeds and feeds and all that see uh, it also came out very well uh d the crosshatch it came out um that is a kind of a cool texture i like the way that t looks uh you can see the crosshatch going on you know i i think it'd be interesting to see uh, a bigger step over there and how that would work out with some smaller step over so playing around there e as well i think that came out not as good as a e compared to a is more dull then A, I think A came out the best in just how vibrant it is. And F uh, had some uh, issues there. I did run that one at a zero degree uh, as opposed to a 45 like the others. But still, there's a vast amount of possibilities that you can go at with this and have fun and really create some new and interesting uh, infills for your designs. So there you have it. That is Carbide Create's new engrave uh, feature. Um, lots of possibilities, a lot of fun you, you can have. Again, this is just kind of going, digging a little bit more into the software side of things. Play around, experiment, set different settings. Again, I think it's going to be really cool playing around with that degree angle and making a larger step size and getting some different being able to create different textures and depths with that. So thank you all for watching. Again, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe and bell button. 
keep up with all the latest videos, and until next time, keep making stuff.